Hi everyone, Mike Nelson here. This is Mike Nelson Maths and we're playing a game that I think was one of the first games I ever taught students when I became a teacher and it's called War. Now I understand that some, some classrooms have an issue with the term war. Battle is another name for this game. It is at its heart a simple reading and ordering game but with a few tweaks we can start to extend and make the game a lot more difficult. We hope you enjoy. We want to hear your suggestions and your advice. Let us know at michaeljnelson09 at gmail.com. Hit us up on the website or check out the Facebook page for more maths ideas. And hopefully we can start adding a bit of enjoyment back in the maths classrooms. Good luck and have fun. So I've just shortened the amount of numbers that I'm using in war just for the sake of this video. But you can obviously add as many layers as you like. So I refer to these as layers. So you have a one digit layer, a two digit, a three digit. And for each layer, if you're on the fifth layer, then you would have five cards in each one. So each player has sort of this pyramid shape. I try not try to avoid a triangle because it sort of reinforces the place value system on there. In the basic version, we are simply comparing the numbers as we turn them over. So nine, and 12, so 12 is greater than nine. You could have the students build it if you wanted. So nine and 12, they keep these cards. Now, you, when we're playing with the child-friendly cards, this gives us this option here of either leaving in the double digit numbers or taking them out. So obviously this is 15 and this is now 136. But if this was reversed and we had this, it's not the number 613. It's six tens and 13 ones. So this is a way that I work in incorporating renaming into what we're doing because the student needs to identify that as six tens and one ten is seven tens and three ones is 73. So they have 15, they have 73. So it re it's a really good formative assessment in terms of whether students can identify the amount of a value in each, in each number or just the digit in the place. So they have 73, which is more than 15. And then we turn over the third level. And as you can see, you can either take these cards out or you could go on the idea of it's one one and one 10. So eight tens and one 10 is nine ten. So this part's 91 and there are 1200. So 1,291 is versing six hundreds, 10 tens. So that's another hundred set, so seven, 700 and two. When you have the child-friendly cards, it's quite easy to have the internal zeros, which I find is an area that students often struggle with when they're reading the numbers. A way of modifying that is you identify cards, mainly in the larger numbers, that you don't turn over. So say for this one, we didn't turn these cards over. Let me just get rid of these ones here and say these cards had come out, you have 401 and 602. So you just leave these cards face down if you're using a normal deck of cards to simulate the internal zeros. So obviously war is a finite game in terms of there's only so many numbers students can read and beyond really the thousands into the millions, you're really relying on the patterns of numbers, hundreds, tens, ones, scientific notation, things like that. So what we tend to do is we leave the game alone in terms of the size of the numbers. We actually shorten it and we introduce the operations. And it mainly affects how the game is scored. So in the other version, we count the number of cards, the person with the most number of cards wins, and we play from there. For this version, we're going to start with just adding the totals together. And that's the number of points. So when I turn over this card, we have a one and a two. So this player won, and they would get three points. So when I turn over this time, it's 92 plus 96. So I add those together, which is 188. And then this person got 188 points. And then we add the bottom three levels and we add these cards together. So we've got 726 plus 402, which is 1,128. 
Alternatively, we can use subtraction. So we play the golf style where we're trying to get the smallest numbers possible. So two take away one is one, 96 take away 92 is four, and then 324 is the amount of points here. We can start, if you win, you add your digits. So this is a third way. So this person would get two. This person won, so they'd get 15 because it's nine plus six. And these ones is seven plus two plus six. So seven and two is nine and six is 15. So you add the total of the cards that one at your layer. Or again, alternative subtraction, two, three, negative one, things like that. You, you know, you can play around with how you wanna do that. And again, if you're wanting to really extend the students, we can start to incorporate multiplication. One multiplied by two, 92 multiplied by 96, 402 multiplied by 726. So things like the lattice method or the area model, or the algorithm are a good opportunity for students to be working through here. So within the four operations, it's mainly focusing on addition, subtraction and multiplication. We can still play the same game, but the student's focus has moved from being able to read and order the numbers onto can we apply <coughs> the calculations. So we can move into back into the reading numbers by adding in some decimals. So I just use cards with the dot put on there. Okay, it doesn't matter if they get lost or integrated. And I can play and manipulate depending on how I want students reading numbers. So we might just start with everything being in the tenths. And it's really important the language we're getting the students to do. So they're not saying point, they're reading it as a tenth. And that establishes the connection to fractions. So from there, it's one tenth, two tenths, nine and two tenths, nine and six tenths. So I can always move them around. I can make it tenths and hundreds. I can add in thousands down the bottom. The only important thing is that if we're gonna have thousands, that both people have the decimal point in the same place. Otherwise, you know, we create unfairness. So one tenth and two tenths, 92 hundredths, 96 hundredths, 402 thousandths, 726 thousandths. So it just allows us with those decimal points, you know, drawn on a piece of paper, just to adjust the size of the numbers that we're working on. And once again, once they get the hang of that, those same operation variations, one tenth, two tenths, my score is three tenths, my score is one and 88 hundredths, I can, Mine is one and 28 thousandths. You, know, you can start to play around with the scores, with adding, subtracting, multiplying, decimals, as well as whole numbers. So a very versatile game.